Styling your Squarespace website just got faster and easier. With this new Chrome extension, the Square Stylist Selector Helper. With just a click, this tool suggests selectors that website owners and designers like you can use to style elements to your heart's content. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to use this tool to customize any Squarespace website like a pro. While Squarespace has powerful built-in design options that allow us to change colors, layouts, and style of the elements, there are instances wherein these options are just not enough to achieve our design vision. And this is where a touch of code magic becomes invaluable. And don't worry if you've never worked with code before. This tool, which I developed specifically for Squarespace users, makes coding in Squarespace surprisingly simple. Let me quickly explain what a selector is. Here is what a simple CSS code looks like. And for context, CSS is what allows us to style any element on a web page. Each CSS rule contains two parts. First is the selector. It identifies the element which we want to style. And the part inside the curly braces are what we call declarations. They determine how we wish to style our selected element. Notice what happens if I go to the CSS area of our Squarespace site and paste our simple CSS code. We're now able to select this element and apply any style. For the declaration part, there are standard ways by which we define the style that we wish to apply. We can simply search for CSS code to add borders and it will take us to official documentation and how to declare our desired styles. However, the selectors are often arbitrary. Hence, most of the time, finding the right selector is the most challenging part of customizing an element on a Squarespace site. This traditionally entails constantly opening the Chrome Inspector tool and digging through the code. This skill is worth learning, but is time consuming. This is why I developed the Square Stylus Selector Helper such that you can simply click the element and our panel will suggest selectors based on your chosen element. Let me walk you through how to install and use it. So let me go to the Chrome Web Store and search for Square Stylist Selector Helper. You may also simply click the link in the description box below. On your end, this button will read Add to Chrome. Simply click this button to install. Just to know that there might be a prompt like this, which will show up when you click the install button. But don't worry, this is typical to any new extension. Once our extension gets enough installs and reviews, this prompt will go away. Be assured that I've developed this to be one of the most lightweight extensions you can stumble upon, and there will be no logins required. So there will be no data collected from your end. Once it's installed, please navigate to this icon wherein you can pin this extension for easy access. I designed this extension to work out of edit mode to not interfere while you're editing your Squarespace website. To preview the page out of edit mode, please click this arrow icon at the top right, copy this entire URL, in a new tab, paste that URL, but add the following, question mark, no redirect. After hitting enter, this will allow us to preview the site without opening the editing interface. When we click our extension, it will now allow us to click any element and it will suggest the selectors accordingly. The extension will also work on custom domains like this one, as long as the editing interface is not initiated. If you are working on a page other than the homepage, for example, this block will follow the same steps. Click this preview, copy this full URL, Open a new tab and add no redirect. This extension opens a lot of possibilities, but in this video, I will just share some simple use cases. For instance, at the moment, Squarespace doesn't have a built-in option for us to rotate an image block, but it's easy to achieve with code. Easier now that we have this extension. So I'll open our extension by clicking our icon. Let's click the element which we wish to rotate. I want to draw your attention to this block category. 
if you're just starting out with code, this block ID will be the most useful to start with. So notice if I hover over this block ID, we can confirm the block and the area that will be affected when we use this as our selector. This preview function allows us to confirm the element that we will be styling. Now, all we need to do is click this selector to copy. When we switch back to our editing dashboard, we can click this search icon to navigate to our CSS panel. Click this custom CSS result, and this is where we can add any CSS rule. Once I paste our selector, we just need to add our curly braces between the curly braces is where we define our declarations. In this case, I'd like to rotate this image really subtly. And if we search for how to rotate an element in CSS, you'll find that it's as easy as adding this rotate property and defining the degree of rotation. In this case, I'd like it to be subtle, so I'll assign 15 degrees. Using this block ID as our selector allows us to make sure that we are not affecting any other elements on the site because this block ID is unique to an element. Since the block ID is specific and helpful for most of the time, you might ask, why did I even have to add all the other selectors here? It's because there are use cases wherein it will be smarter and more time efficient to use the other selectors. For example, what if I'd like to rotate these two images within our second section? Well, of course, I can copy the block IDs of each and be able to rotate them by copying their block IDs and separating them with a comma in our selector. This is totally fine when you only have to apply the same CSS rule to just two blocks, but it becomes tedious if we'd need to apply this to more than three. So another way to approach this is by using our class selector right here. So I can copy this and paste it as our selector. However, notice that all the images on our website are now unintentionally being affected. Our extension gave us a preview of such when we hovered over this selector. Notice how other elements beyond the second section are also affected. But this is when the other selector categories in our panel will be helpful. If you scroll down, notice how we have this section category. This means that the element that we clicked is within this section. These are also IDs and data section attributes. That means these are specific to this section only. What I recommend is using this option with the data section. This other option is a temporary ID because it has this YUI, but I'll show you later on when this first option will become handy. So for now, I'll copy this option with a data dash section. And what we can do is wrap our CSS rule within our section selector. To do so, let's paste our section ID, add curly braces, and we need to make sure that this CSS rule that targets all image blocks is wrapped inside this section ID. So I'll hit Command X on my keyboard and place it inside this section ID and notice immediately that this rotation is only limited to all image block elements within this corresponding section. Let's work on another example. Squarespace allows us to add video blocks, but the video blocks in Squarespace is optimized for landscape videos. What if you wish to upload portrait videos like this? We need code to fix the aspect ratio. There's a simple code that allows us to do so, which is defining the top padding. But adding the CSS rule will mean that we will affect all video blocks within the website. If we wish to limit this aspect ratio to videos within this section only, then we can again grab our extension, click this section, and we'll find that the data section ID is right here. We can simply copy that 
and make sure to wrap this CSS rule within this section ID. Again, I'll add curly braces, make sure this CSS rule is inside this section ID, and we'll notice that if I duplicate this section, this other section won't be affected by that portrait aspect ratio. But if I duplicate this block by selecting it and hitting Command-D on my keyboard, we'll find that any video within this section will adapt that portrait aspect ratio. I mentioned a while ago that this section selector with hash might be useful later on. That's because Squarespace is considering to add this anchor link option, which will allow us to create a permanent ID value. If that feature is rolled out, when we click this extension and click the section, we'll notice that our section no longer has that temporary YUI code. It will now be this permanent ID. And we can now use this easy to read option in our CSS instead of the data section ID and our CSS will still work. At this point, we're actually just scratching the surface of how powerful our selector helper is. What really sets this tool apart from existing solutions is that it can help suggest selectors for key elements other than the blocks or sections. For example, at the moment, there isn't an option for us to change the colors of our accordion item titles. If we'd like to granularly control the style of this element, then what we can do is again, open our extension and click this accordion title. Under the element category of our panel, we'll find the suggested selectors. The longer one is the more specific, but most of the time, the shorter one will work. And we can confirm the elements that will be affected by the selector by looking at the highlighted elements when we hover over this specific selector. So to try this out, we can copy the selector, navigate to our CSS panel, and again, within curly braces, we can try adding any customizations. For example, I can assign the color to red and notice how this tile was immediately applied. And as always, if we want to limit this customization only to this particular section, we can scroll down to our section category, copy the selector, and wrap our CSS rule within this selector. I'd like to point out though that because the blocks, containers, and wrappers within Squarespace are sometimes overlapping, there are elements which might be harder to find the selectors of. Our selector helper will still be helpful, but it might entail a bit of trial and error. So for example, I have this list section with a carousel slide format. And for instance, I wish to add a background color to the description area. It seems like I can easily click this title, but I cannot easily click this description. Feel free to try clicking the container around it. And you'll find that when we preview, these suggested selectors, we will be able to find the selector corresponding the description area. So if I copy this and use in our CSS area, for example, I can add a background color of yellow. Notice how it's applied immediately. I'd like to mention that it is normal for some of the elements to be moved whenever we're previewing some of the suggested selectors. Be assured that this is temporary and all these highlights will go away once we close the extension or refresh our browser. I hope this video and tool gives you a head start into customizing your Squarespace website. If you'd like to learn more and receive high touch support from me, please check out my course, Standout Squarespace. In this program, I teach smarter and more sophisticated ways to identify elements. These smart selectors will be helpful if you wish your customizations to be carried over when you save the section in your saved sections catalog, which is particularly helpful if you wish to have a more streamlined workflow or if you wish to sell coded Squarespace templates. What's great when we use smart selectors is that when we duplicate the section, all of the code customizations will be retained.
please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more tutorials and please check out our next video all about all the other ways to customize your Squarespace website.